Good morning and welcome to our service from St John's on Sunday the 13th of December. We've now reached the third Sunday of Advent, so I'm going to start by lighting three candles on our Advent ring. We lit the first candle for hope. and the second candle for peace. And today we light the third candle and remember John the Baptist. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Our first song this morning is How Lovely on the Mountains Are the Feet of Him Who Brings Good News. There aren't any choristers singing along today, but the words will be on the screen, so I hope you'll join in at home as Catherine plays for us. Let's say sorry to God using our prayer of confession. Merciful God, forgive us when we are quick to point the finger at someone else. Forgive us when we put our heads down and ignore the cries of injustice. Forgive us when we don't want to face up to the complexity of issues that divide 
and distract us. Amen. Merciful God, forgive us, heal us, encourage us and speak through us that we may be transformed through the refiner's fire so that the offerings of our hands and our hearts may prepare the way for the Christ child to be welcomed among us in peace. Our Bible reading this morning comes from uh, the first chapter of John's Gospel and it's read for us by Wendy. The reading is from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. So here we are on the third Sunday in Advent. The weeks seem to be flying by, Christmas fast approaching. The village is already festooned with lights. Our large tree in the church garden looks so lovely, topped with its star. And traditionally on this third Sunday in Advent, we hear again about John the Baptist, that strange, enigmatic and powerful figure pointing the way to Jesus. In our reading from John's Gospel, another John, the disciple and Gospel writer John the Evangelist, after whom our church is named, in our reading just now we heard about the John we call John the Baptist. I think we all inevitably tend to piece together from all the four Gospels bits of information about John in order to try to build up a picture of him. He was Jesus's cousin, not a first cousin but a cousin of some sort, the child of Elizabeth, the relation of Mary's, a few months older than Jesus. We know from the Bible that Mary travelled to meet Elizabeth when they were both pregnant. We don't really know anything about John's childhood and we meet him again as a young man, a loner in the wilderness, preaching a gospel of repentance, telling everyone to prepare for the coming of someone who was far greater than he. Jesus. We hear in Matthew's Gospel that he wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and that his food consisted of locusts and wild honey. And we know that crowds flocked to hear him preach his Gospel of repentance. I think this word repentance is worth exploring for a moment. We talk about repenting for our sins, saying sorry to God for the things we've done wrong, or in regretting things we haven't done that we think we should have done. Which is all about looking back at what's already happened or not happened. I think it's quite helpful to know that the word repentance is from a Greek word, metanoia. And this word metanoia actually means a change of mind, a change of attitude, 
a change of state of being, which is all about looking forward to how we might act, live and behave in the future. And Advent is, of course, a time when we are particularly looking forward to Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, to Jesus entering our hearts in a new and special way again, and to his second coming in the future. John, as Jesus did later, inevitably came to the notice of the authorities who were suspicious of him and who feared the fact that he was stirring people up. And they questioned him, who are you? Well, John himself clearly knew who he was. He also knew clearly and confidently when questioned who he wasn't. He was not the Messiah, the prophet Elijah and so on. He himself was not the light, as our reading said, but he came to testify to the light. He knew he had a very specific mission to accomplish. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, he said. Make straight the way of the Lord. His message, echoing the words of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, was that the Lord was indeed on his way. So, metaphorically, the way needed to be made straight, the path cleared, the road mended. He preached repentance and he baptised people with water, knowing full well and proclaiming to all who came to him that the one who would come after him, Jesus, was far more important and far more special. I am not worthy, he said in today's reading, to untie the thong of his sandal. What John was doing through his command to repent was calling for a right relationship with God, a change of lifestyle where needed, a shaking up of attitudes, a questioning of priorities. All things we are particularly challenged to think about at Advent. Which brings us to consider what we can do about this. The ex-Archbishop Rowan Williams wrote that we live as human beings in an enormous hunger to be spoken to, to be touched, judged, loved and absolved and that we all live at some level in an awareness that there are things we cannot do for ourselves. Wise words, I think. Being touched is, of course, at present somewhat out of bounds, but hopefully with the advent of vaccinations, this won't be the case for too much longer. We need people like John the Baptist to point the way. And we need each other, don't we? We have a God who keeps his promises. We have a God who is faithful. Yes, terrible things happen in the world and in our personal lives. But somehow love still shines in the darkness. In darkness, even a very little light shines out brightly. Yes, there are things we can't do for ourselves, but often there are little things that we can do for others. Little things mean so much. My husband Barry is always leaving things around the house, losing things, usually glasses and or glasses case. He won't have a clue where these are at the moment. But also very often his diary. And it's actually quite a noticeable diary. It has a rainbow on it. A great sign of inclusivity. And we felt at the start of lockdown 
a very visible sign of support for our wonderful NHS. Now I've been finding this diary and picking it up from here and there around the house all year. And I did know what it said on the front and I have absolutely no idea why it was only a couple of weeks ago in the first week of Advent that I bothered not just to read the words but to be really struck by the words. And it says this very simply, be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. I've just realised this looks back to front on my screen now. I don't know whether it'll look back to front to you or not, but trust me, it says, be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. Don't you think that's a wonderful thing to aspire to? Being a rainbow in someone else's cloud doesn't mean you necessarily have to do anything memorable. We can't all be special like John the Baptist. But we can do little things. We can help in little ways. Especially this Advent 2020 in these weird times. We can try in the smallest of ways just by a little act of kindness, a kind word on the telephone, or a smile even behind a mask. We can try to be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. Advent can be for us all a time of preparation, particularly of spiritual preparation. And we can do this through making time, making time for reflection on our priorities, making time for some stillness and contemplation. To help, there's our Advent ribbons, a prayer a day. If you haven't got one of these, they're also on the church website. There's something very, very powerful in the idea of all of us, many of us, the same day sharing the same prayer. I'm actually recording this talk on the morning of Wednesday the 9th of December and today's prayer says this, Lord we thank you for the gift of hope, for trusting that things can be better, we can be stronger, our faith can deepen and our lives reflect your love every day. Also on the church website are Advent Reflections each Tuesday. There's two there already from the 1st and 8th of December and there will be others to follow on the 15th and the 22nd. There's also Ruth's Faith MOT course. Please have a look at that if you haven't done so already. And also on the website a fresh weekly Advent activities, lots of practical and fun things to do, not just for children, absolutely not just for children. John the Baptist's relatively short and ultimately tragic life was dedicated to pointing ahead to Jesus, to call people to prepare for Jesus' coming. So may we see this Advent as a time of preparation, as a time of new opportunities and of fresh hope, a time of promise and a time of wonder. Let's pray that this Advent 2020, different though it may be from other Advents we've ever known, may it be a time when our faith is deepened and our commitment is strengthened. Amen. Jesus' feet Cause me
Today we remember John the Baptist, who came to bear witness to the light that was coming into the world. In this season of Advent, let us think about those people and situations for whom Christ's light is absent or dimmed, and pray for the ways in which we can be his light bearers for them through the ways we respond in our own lives. And in our prayers when I say, Lord of light, please respond, shine through us. Lord of light, shine through us. We pray for all in our world whose lives are blighted by hunger, poverty and injustice. We give thanks for those organisations and individuals who work to alleviate the causes and the consequences of unjust systems. May we too be bearers of Christ's light in the face of unfairness, inequality and exclusion, so that justice and compassion will prevail for all. Lord of light, shine through us. We pray for the church throughout the world and for this church. We give thanks for our vicar Ruth and for all who contribute to the life and ministry here at St John's. May we all grow in the light of Christ's love and give to each one of us, collectively and individually, the insight to know how we can be beacons of that light in this community and beyond. Lord of light, shine through us. We pray for our world and give thanks for all its many wonders. Creator God, may the light of Christ help us to glimpse the brightness of your glory and the beauty of your creative activity in the world around us. May we we grow in knowledge of and love for your creation, that we may always treat its many parts with care and respect. Lord of light, shine through us. We pray for all who are suffering with physical or emotional conditions, all who are weighed down with worry and concern. May the light of Christ shine in their lives, bringing strength and comfort, restoration and refreshment. As we long for the time when we shall no longer feel under the control of this pandemic, we give thanks for the light of hope that has been cast over COVID as the first vaccine has been authorised and is now being given to the first groups of people. Lord of light, shine through us. We remember with love and sorrow those who have died and pray for those who are grieving. May the light of Christ and the promise of eternal life help them find hope and peace amidst their sadness and loss. Lord of light, shine through us. Gracious and loving God, help us to always walk as people of the light shining out in places of suffering and difficulty and touching the lives of many with the warmth of your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And now let's affirm our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final song this morning is I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
God for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Redeemer and Sustainer, rest and remain upon you this day and in the days to come. Amen.